Hi everyone, IT Man 79, Neil Eilert, whatever you want to call me. Um, as long as there's no bad names, right? Some people have asked me, what does it mean to be CPU limited or restricted by your CPU in a modern video game? Uh, there's a lot of different CPUs on the market today. You have the i3, the i5, i7, you have Sandy Bridge, you have Sandy Bridge Enhanced or Extreme. Uh, you have a AMD FX line, you have the uh, AMD X6 and the AMD X4 line of CPUs, just to name a few. So some people have said, well, what does it mean if you're in your video game? How do you know if your CPU is limited? So what I decided to do was set up a slideshow that will kind of demonstrate today what it means to be CPU limited. First of all, we need to understand what exactly the CPU does in a system. The CPU in a modern computer is responsible for basically either handling or offloading all of its responsibilities onto another peripheral. So even though you have a dedicated video card, your CPU is required to send the information to that video card to be rendered for a scene. It handles input logic from your mouse, your keyboard, your joystick, VoIP, whenever you talk to your friends while you're Skyping. Uh, all those things are handled by the CPU. Uh, it handles while in game. It handles artificial intelligence if you're playing like a single player game. It handles the game engine code. Uh, sound processing since uh, Windows Vista came along has now been offloaded to the CPU instead of dedicated hardware. Uh, and then all non-graphic related game code is all handled by the CPU. Now what can happen if your CPU is holding you back? Well of course you're going to get slowdowns. Uh, you'll also perhaps get stutters uh, when the CPU has reached its maximum capacity and it can no longer send enough data to the video card. You may get a stutter or a glitch. You may experience like a lag type sensation. Uh, your sound may become distorted uh, because it can no longer process the required sound information to actually become audible. So it may actually uh, become garbled or distorted. And of course the all important, you miss your important kill shots. Now what do we have here? This is Battlefield uh, Bad Company 2. And to give you some background on the system that this is running on, uh, this is a Core 2 Duo E8400, which runs at 3 GHz. It's a dual core processor. Now those familiar with Battlefield Bad Company 2 know that it loves quad core or greater processors. It will, it will run on a dual core. It just does not run the best. Now, the video card used in this scene was a GTX 285. Uh, it's an older video card, DirectX 10 video card. But if you notice, I have circled here in red. That is the GPU usage in MSI Afterburner. Uh, it's a RivaTuner uh, based, uh, software based information system that displays an overlay while in game to give you this important information. EVGA Precision is another one that does the same thing. It uses RivaTuner as well. Uh, so I do suggest if you're curious on how to run this, uh, download either EVGA Precision or MSI Afterburner and enable your on-screen display while you're in game and you can get these same uh, tidbits of information. So my GPU usage in this screen was 71%. Uh, not 99 or 100%, which means GPU usage, if it was 99 or 100 percent, it never hits 100. It always either 99 percent, 98, somewhere in there. If it was that high, that would mean that my CPU is keeping up with the video card. It's sending the required amount of information to the video card to keep it maxed out at 98, 99 percent. In this case, we fall short. We're only getting 71 percent usage, which means something else is holding the video card back. That something else happens to be the CPU. So for this title, Bad Company 2, you need something better than an E84 3.0 GHz dual core to drive a GTX 285. Now if you were to change the video card to a slower video card, then your CPU would be adequate. The E8400 would have been adequate because the slower video card would not have been able to display the frames at a faster rate than what the CPU could have provided them. The GTX 285, though, could. Here's another example. Uh, 
what I like to do is keep Task Manager open in the background, usually almost at all times, honestly. And it's an invaluable tool to uh, any Windows NT based system. Uh, but if you put it on slow update, it doesn't eat very many resources, if any at all. And it also gives you a nice graph of how your CPU and how your system is performing. Uh, in example one here, this was on the same E8400. Uh, this is the background. I just happen to like the screenshot. Uh, you can kind of tell why. Uh, but this game actually that I was playing at this time was Left 4 Dead. This was on an E8400 with the same GTX 285. As you can see, the processor in this time frame here spent a lot of its time 80, 90, 100%. It peaked quite a bit at 100%. That's an indication of being CPU limited. The second slide down here is actually a more modern system with the 2600K that's overclocked. And this was running Battlefield Bad Company. I'm sorry, no, I apologize. Battlefield 3. As you can see, the CPU never peaked at 100%. None of the cores. These are all cores or threads. None of the threads peaked at 100%. They all stayed usually in the 40, 50, maybe 60% uh, threshold level. That is an indication of not being CPU limited. The CPU is able to provide all the power that the GPU needs to render the video game. I hope this was a good explanation of what it means to be CPU limited. Uh, I do invite you, if you're curious yourself, if you're CPU limited. Some people have asked me, how do I know? Open up Task Manager. Put it on slow update, run your favorite game, enjoy, don't even be concerned about your frame rates, and then when you're done with that game, quit out to your desktop and observe your graphs and see where your CPU lies. That will give you the best indication. If you're running like this on all your threads, if you have a quad core, you'll have four of these. Uh, this is a quad core with hyper threading, so it shows eight threads. If they're all close like this, 80, 90, 100%, it shows your CPU is really being stressed. Just as a note, that is not a bad thing. Having your CPU stressed to 100% is not going to break anything. It's not going to cause any damage to your system. It's not going to necessarily impact even your gameplay. As long as the frames per second that are being rendered are satisfactory for you. If you're happy with your frames per second, then there's nothing to worry about. If you're not happy with it and you start to see this, then it's time to consider your upgrade options. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just shoot me a message. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, and subscribe if you're interested. Thank you.